How did you get it? So I bought it from a guy who sells cars like this. Um, I was able to get this car when I did because it was imported for racing. Oh. So. Uh, rally? Yeah. So like um, rally cars, when you get a car that way, you can never register it. I right. Mean, you could probably do it some illegal way. Right. Uh, so that's how I did it back then. And uh, this guy still still does it. He's still around. Oh, he br so he brings yeah. these in for like race purposes. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and uh, I got this in 2004. And I had a, a Civic Si. Oh, sick. EP3. Oh, yeah, I like that. First new car I ever had. Oh, you bought a brand new? Yeah, I never had a new car. And actually, I is a totally nuts story because I'm like the king of owning like thousand dollar car, like right. shit cars. And I had never had a nice car really until then. And this person contacted me completely out of the blue. And they said, I was friends with your mother. I feel like I owe her one. I want to buy you a car. What are you doing this weekend? I had never met her. What? Yeah. And she did. She bought you a Civic, <laughs> she bought I said. Me a Civic. That's sick. So I had that for like a year and I got in an accident on Starro Drive, which is one of these things going into Boston. I was driving next to a state cop. I used to work at BU. I was driving along, like no bullshit. And we both started going. Was it just icy? Totally black guys. We just did this <laughs> dance for a bit. And then I crashed and it kind of like backed it into a really high curb and it just like just fucked the car. Oh, that sucked. And uh, I got insurance payout. This thing came up. The guy was reluctant to sell it because he was going to build a car himself with it. Uh, I made an emotional plea to him. I've always wanted an Evo. <laughs> I've and always he's wanted like, fine, to... you dick, fine. I'll sell it. And that was it. And I got it. And I couldn't believe it. And it's it was sick. Because, cool like, at least. And it was stock. Yeah, it was totally stock. It was actually really screwed up when I got it because uh, the guy didn't take care of it. Oh. And the transfer case was like a molten pile of metal. Like it didn't, the wheels didn't even turn. So to get on the trailer, I had to drag it because the wheels were locked. So I didn't really know what I was getting into. Like I knew that the engine ran and that was it. Uh, the engine had a crank walk. Oh really? Like all like early. I didn't know that. I mean, I did. I thought like the fours were the worst. Uh, DSM, like 2G DSM. Right. Yeah. And this is like essentially the same yeah. 2G DSM engine. My clutch started acting funny and I was like, oh. I never checked this thing for crank walk, and it was like, oh like really? The when I took the engine apart, there was uh, no bearing left, no thrust bearing. That's what goes right, and it makes go the on. crank go in and yeah, out. Yeah, and the crank was scored. So I built a Galant block, a six bolt block. Is that what's in it now? Yep. <clears throat> same engine. It's been through a few. Oh. So maybe the same block, but the six bolt doesn't have that problem. It's very right, strong. Right. And it has Evo, the Evo head on the oh, six okay. block. So it's a little bit of a. That's sick. And now it's a 2.3 liter. Oh, it is? Like roughly, yeah. 2.2. I didn't know you did the stroker. Yeah. What size turbo? It's a GT3071. Oh, okay. It's not laggy? No. No. I mean, the car's got anti lag. I guess the 2.3 so, helps too. Yeah, that helps. Um, yeah, for the street, it might be laggy. Right. But when you're like cranking the car out, once all you're going, the time yeah. with the track or. The hill climb, and you get that instant load from going uphill. Like it's not laggy, right? And it's got an anti lag. You'll hear. Uh, so that's sick. You can, make, you can make like six pounds of boost at idle. Oh really? Yeah. That's awesome. So, that so awesome. what'd you do? You just sold all the interior stuff? Or? So yeah, you know that was a long time ago. I sold. I know who I sold the seats to. There's this dude, um, in the BMW club that we built a car for, and he they're just standard SRDs, so you can take them off the mounts and sell them. Oh them. okay anybody so I sold him the seats and we put him in his E30 that's sick and and didn't they come with SRDs too E30 the Evo did the E30 yeah. Evo yeah yeah but the other ones just had like just those weird if you got the sport it had Recaros right but they were like bespoke BMW right, right. and this has 3000 GT brakes on doesn't it it does on the front oh just the front and the rear is just standard uh, Evo but why'd um, you go with that instead of like the Evo 8 Brembo or something um, you know what at the time, it's what I had. Right. The uh, the Evo 8 Brembo is like people use them a lot, but they're not really that good. Right. I hear they like have like a lot of flex they and do. stuff. Yeah, they're like Brembo is for people who want 
to say they have brown bows. Me. That's yeah. why I want them on my GTR. Because I hate looking at what's behind the Regas. Yeah, yeah. And like I'm not gonna get like a seven thousand dollar. Very similar actually. Right. Like the R32, I, I heard that they're like they're like the same. Yeah, they might be the same. They like they, they just have a Mitsubishi badge. Probably. On them. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Um so I figured these are fine. The car is twenty five hundred pounds, so it's not like you're trying to stop a four thousand pound street car. And it makes how much power? Right now it's four forty seven wheel. So, and we were talking about numbers before, that's, that's corrected. Right. Uh, so maybe a little more. But the, um, the highest it's ever made, I was looking back at dyno charts, the highest it's ever made has been about 500, just under 500. Damn. <clears throat> and it's a handful, I bet. Yeah. There we go. Nice. I love the headlight. So all the stuff, all, like stuff like that, off the shelf. So the headlight thing is from this guy in the UK that I hooked up with. He was on this. There's like an early Evo forum, mm -hmm. and he was on there briefly. Uh, he was a composites engineer for some F1 team. I think that's like super popular job in UK or something. Yeah. <laughs> and he had an Evo and he made a bunch of them. So I was like, yeah, I want that. So I got one from him. It's not really doing anything right now, but... How's your shift linkage? The shift linkage is not on there <laughs> because I started replacing the... Uh, did you use skateboard bearings? Yeah, <laughs> no. That's what I Some used in mine. Doing that, I did it in my Evo. Yeah. Because I had a bunch laying around. I just tried it and then I bought like the brass. This is like how, yeah. I, this is like how I do things now. I, I start something and it takes like a week to finish. That's how I am and everyone so, hates it on my channel. So these are the old bushings. It's mm -hmm. blown out. Junk. Yeah, these that's what I bought. These are the new ones. But of course they don't fit, right? Because I've got this Group A transmission, mm -hmm. and they're way too thick. Oh. So this would work in a normal Evo, but which is single shear. The pin goes through. It's got a little arm with a pin, and then you pin it. Mine is double shear, mm -hmm. so there's one on each side, so I can't fit this bushing in. So what are you going to do? I have to machine, machine these. It? Yeah, take them to work and machine it. That's sick. So, yeah, What's up with these mounts? Do you just have solid mounts in here? Yeah, just solid these are special. These are from a World Rally car. Um, that mount, this water pump, pulley, the crank pulley, they're all WRC parts. That's uh, sick. And Bill helped me find these. I was going to say, did Bill yeah, have, oh, of course. have part? Of course. Part of He's an animal. Yep. There's a uh, Yari Mati Latvala. He's a racer now for VW, but he uh, he is a Mitsubishi enthusiast. And he's, oh, yeah. Him and his dad are building a WRC. Uh, Evo 3. Oh, that's in cool. Sweden, so. This thing looks so cool. I have pictures of this like that are so old. Yeah. I, I found them the yeah. other day. It's pretty fun. I've been following it. Like, like I remember I like wanted to buy it when you got it yep. for sale for yep. like a minute and yep. then you're like, oh, I don't know yep. if I could sell I mean, it. This thing has pissed me off so many times and when you get really into something and it frustrates you. Yeah, it's, it's the worst. It's, Get it out of here, right? So, That's, how did the names like with the 240 RS and the Pleasure Evo? Bill has been a rally fan forever, so the 240 RS is this very old rally car. There's a guy in my town that has one. Okay. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You're probably the only one that knows about this car yeah. besides Bill. It is weird. Yeah. And, and uh, it's not that cool looking or anything. No, no. It's no, like it's but like it's a cool old car. Right. It's just an old car. It doesn't look like a 240 for those of you right. who don't. It has like remote brake boosters you know, and it has like a bunch of crazy you know, stuff. Yep. The FJ20, I, I think. I want to say that uh, this rally driver, Shaker Meta, drove it, but I am probably... Oh, yeah. So, uh, the Pleasure Evo, I think it was partly or mostly our friend Ron, because he saw how frustrated this thing would make me, and yeah. I wanted to, like, drive it off a cliff. So he's like, oh, it's like, so it's a pleasure. It's really <laughs> so much pleasure. <laughs> so it was mostly, like, ironic. That's it also sick. kind of played into like 80s. Yeah, that's what I like about glam it. I wish that I could get somebody and, to and name I my took, car. I took the, the Newport cigarette. Is that what it is? Yeah. I was like, I know that font. Yeah, so it's kind of like a play on like 555 or like, uh, yeah. you know, Golwaz or any of those big time. Can I, I open this? Remember. I don't remember. It's probably not cheap, but it's probably cheaper than buying new. Look at his Volkswagen door panel. I know, it's super hipster. <laughs> so, 
Just imagine it's like a Mercedes Evo 3. Right. That's what I was imitating. Not you, you, a VW. You nailed it. Not some kid's VW not with, Golf. Not, with some safari, old, not some old woman's flannel. With a safari rack. I'm going to have a BMX bike on the roof. Yeah, that's what you need. You oh, I like the false floor, too. Yeah. That's made by this company called Debo Tech. Grant needs that. My buddy Grant has an yeah, E36. Nice he took the carpet out. Without it. Well, he took the carpet out. The E36 carpet's this thick. Yeah, yeah. So his, his pedals it are... It holds all like the, the mold from like 20 years yeah. ago. Yeah, oh yeah. So that's from a NASCAR. Oh, really? Yeah. It to fit. Your ride height is... It's high. It's high. But yeah. it doesn't look... For some reason, it doesn't it's, look bad. It's mostly... It's probably low, but I cut so much out of the car right. that it looks high. Well, yeah, it's definitely yeah. low. I mean, look how close yeah. you're... But, but you need it. Because the, you need to change the radius on these older cars, yeah. too, right? Because yeah, they're... If you had 15s, right. it'd be great. Right. Ideally, it would be awesome if I could run 16s, but you can't find... There's no good tire. No good tire. Well, they make a 245, like, R comp and stuff. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's like very balloony looking, right? Which I don't mind, but you end up with the same outside diameter right. as this, and then you're limited in brakes. Yeah, exactly. Do your brakes fit over 16s? The front ones are fit under. Probably not. Right. They might fit over like TEs. Right. Really good wheels. Yeah. But you got no TEs. You're gonna fuck them up. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a couple sets of TEs. We gotta get some TEs on uh, on yours. <laughs> Someday. I I love this car. I've loved this car for so long. Thanks, man. Who made that manifold? Bill. Oh, he did? Yeah. God, he's a wizard. He's awesome. And I sent it off for uh, Swain Tech. Yeah. Coating. I remember back when, like, I had my Evo, you would get that done a lot of powder coaters. And now you can't, you know, it's just huh. like, you can't get that. it done anymore. <laughs> I had to send that to UK. Oh, I just meant ceramic coating. I don't know oh, what yeah, a Swain yeah. Tech is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what it is, basically? Mm -hmm. just, ceramic, yeah. yeah. God, this thing looks cool. <clears throat> So you block that, like, is there... Yeah, I just blocked it. It's kind of industrial looking. Did you... It, was there a reason you... There's nothing were? there, so oh. I figured just leave it smooth. Right. Um, is this a stock front bumper? Evo 2, yeah. Evo 2 front bumper. And then I saw you had a, a spare. Yeah, I have an Evo 3 front bumper. That's, yeah. This is a replica. Oh, it this is? This is what the car came with. It's fiberglass. Oh. Uh, it's fine. I mean, if I get a crash and I need to throw one on for the weekend, it's Right. Good. And that's an Evo 2 rear. Uh, I got rear-ended at the track. There's like a very stupid circumstance that, so I had to replace the bumper. No shit. That's funny. Yeah. How does that work when you get uh, rear-ended at the track? Who pays for that? like texting and driving or something, but I don't know. <laughs> no one, uh, you pay for that. Who pay right. For that. That's, that sucks. Uh, and his grills are supposed to be white, but the guy who painted the car didn't, he, he just, missed. He wanted to make them black, I think, so. Oh, I, I think they look cool in black. Yeah, I mean, he... He can do whatever the hell he wants right. that way, right? For he the deal you out. got. He helped me out so much. Yeah. It, uh, it looks good. I, yeah, it's cool. It's I, this car, like right now looking at this, I just want an Evo 1, 2, 3 so bad. So, I mean, tell me about what you were talking about when you were, uh, you didn't drive it for however long. Oh, so I didn't drive. So when we were driving the, the, the race cars a lot with our business, we did enough red line time attacks and we did gt live yeah that's we did it. enough that i was like getting points towards the championship but for the, for the national championship we did like six events one year and uh i got fifth in like the national series just by doing like mostly east coast events mm -hmm. and that was like 08 or 09 probably was that when tarzan was at gt uh -huh, live that uh -huh. was sick yeah and it was raining and i remember a picture yeah. like this the the cyclone of water mm -hmm. off the back of, of, of the cyber evo so he came to two he came the one he went to the cyber evo was the first one right and that's the one that bill that's the one that bill was at so yeah we did a lot of hill climbs all the way up to like 2000 nine probably or ten and then that was when bill and i were like working so much that i don't know at least i was like kind of burnt out with cars just like when your hobby and your right. car collide and you don't want to do it anymore so i kind of parked it and it was also frustrating me because it came into that period before i had the dog box that the transmission was breaking a lot it was oh really fourth gear was just blowing up yeah and i didn't have a solution for it so you bought two rally art dog boxes that's the solution so and so going back to what we were originally talking about, I raced in 2011 once, that was at Climb of the Clouds. I didn't drive the car before. And then a car, put, car got put away for three years. 
came back out for 2014. Didn't you win your uh, class? I won. No, I didn't win a climb to the clouds. I got third. Oh. I think both times. I remember that drama. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then there was some <laughs> drama. This <laughs> kid's friends wanted to beat me up. <laughs> Because yeah. that was weird, man. They said you cheated, and then no, I said they cheated. Right. And that was why they were angry at me. Right. Because they did cheat. But you didn't caught. say anything to. They got caught on their own, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said it afterward. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty obvious. Right. That's uh, awesome. So I remember that on Facebook. That was super weird. And so I ended up sending that kid the trophy, by the way. Oh, you did? It's like a like because he's because he talked shit about you getting yeah. third. He was like, yeah. So he. Felt like he should have been in third. So you sent him the trophy. I rem yeah, I remember that. That's sick. So yeah, did you yeah, ever hear I'm a response? Talk shit to everybody. Here's your trophy. Like I hope it feels good. You can have it. <laughs> and I kind of thought he was gonna send it back. But yeah. He never did. He kept, he kept it. it. Yeah. He earned that. Yeah, he earned it. He's like a driving school instructor. <laughs> oh really? He was driving every day. You know, I drove once in three. So how did he cheat? He had no. Res well, his restrictor was like completely whack. Oh. It was like way out of spec. Like it was like on the end of this hose. And it's supposed to be a certain amount of this right, right. from the compressor wheel. So they caught him, and then you and said something and afterward. That, and I think that that wasn't even what got him. It was that the configuration from tech to post race inspection was different. The so that was that was why I say that it had nothing to do with me, because the tech inspector you're supposed to leave the car obviously the way it is. Right. And he had changed the whole setup in between. And he got caught. Yeah. And you beat him. And he got oh, mad. Yeah. And then he sent the trophy. I, I remember the box. I remember seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> but he kept He's it. Back, I think. I oh, think. that'll be awkward. But I think we're in a different class now. Uh oh. Why I'm going to check out the interior because I didn't. Yeah. So you had a one cage in this before, and then you went to this cage. Yep. And this is a fully custom. Yep. This is made by a guy named Chris Howard. Oh, the, you we talked about yep. that when I wanted a cage. Yep. Apologies. He's actually the interiors a little exploded right now. Yeah, no, it's cool though. It's a, it's a race car. It's in process. Got that old dense sport. I have a black and a white one. Oh, nice. Just you sitting. Mine's like all dirty, discolored. I'm surprised you didn't save one for you. What if you get like some car? Dude, you I didn't even get any of those T-shirts. Remember the Lamborghini T-shirts? I have one. I never got one. I got that That's blue one. That's my life. I didn't get one. I'm gonna show it on the video. Yeah. The interior is awesome. It's pretty cool. So the uh, earlier cage had a single single diagonal. Mm-hmm. Of course, had the place for the harness. It didn't have a roof diagonal. Yeah, that's It nice. didn't have A pillar braces or X bars. It had a single diagonal on the door that went from the main hoop. Kind of like a drag. Yeah, yeah, very low. Yeah. And for hill climb, they really worry about like stuff coming into the car. Like, like if you go off in a tree, tree or yeah. something. So at first I was like, ah, oh, I wish I could just keep this cage. And then after a while I was like, I really need a better cage. This isn't enough. Like we're really going fast now. Right. This is really scary. Like how fast do you see on on the Mount the Washington? Climb? I think yeah. I hit 106. Wow. Yeah. Uphill yeah. on tight, tight. Yeah, very tight. I mean, the road's like eight feet wide. So this makes know. me feel good that you steel braided line all the way to the back. Oh yeah. Because I was thinking about it for my E36, and everyone's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, they flex." And yeah, I'm like, "Come it's on, it's fine." Yeah. So there's like a divider wall. It's made out of this like signboard stuff. Right. And then. Pretty bare in here. I have all the drain plugs out of the car right now. Yeah, I noticed that in the front. The mice. They don't like it. Yeah, I just I, I want to be if there's poop, I just want to be able to Let's swipe it right down. Yeah. So this is like a search tank, yep. fuel search yep. tank. <clears throat> and I mean, did you have an issue and that's how you put it in, or was it kind of uh, like a preventative? I don't remember having an issue. I yeah, I put this in. The fuel returns to this from the engine, and then when it overflows, if it ever overflows, this goes back to the tank. Oh, that's sick. How much does this hold? A uh, liter. Maybe a little over a liter. That's sick. Well, this car's like still really simple. Yeah, very simple. Very simple. Just you know, you always see like... And you have the stock tank in? Stock tank, yep. That's awesome. Uh, I had to replace the... Sh I made the shock towers higher. These are extensions I made. Oh, that looks So fun. I cut them out. So the car can be lower, but still have a lot of wheel right. travel. I need that and everything. So, okay. I'm gonna... I, I was thinking about this on the way here. Mm -hmm. I want to know what your favorite part of the car is, oh. like simple and your least, and like the thing you hate about wow. it. Wow. Because uh, I always like, I always yeah. hate everything about my car, so yeah. I know there's something. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, my favorite part about the car, the transmission. Okay. Easily. Yeah. I would, if someone said you can have 200 horsepower 
in this transmission or 500 with a stock, I would take 200 for this. <laughs> That's how much faster it makes the car. Really? It's way better. You can shift super fast. The ratios are incredibly close. So there's no clutch with the dog? Yep, no clutch. Uh, it's, it's especially helpful downshifting because right. you can brake and shift down. Right. It, it's awesome. It Left foot brake, you can do all kinds faster. of stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's strong, you know it's reliable. Right. Have you have you damaged one for to need the second? No. No. So you just have Absolutely. the other one just to spare. Yeah, I mean that's the going down a road I don't want to go down. Right. But it might. I mean who knows. So the worst part, uh, I'm not very happy with the steering column. The, I, I, where's that video where where something yeah. breaks? Yeah, <laughs> So that was my fault. I went to this a long time ago. I had uh, moved the alternator to accommodate the turbo because the alternator is like on the front it's right. a weird spot. And uh, I used some drag kit this company had made. And as soon as you started turning the car, the pump, which ran the alternator and the power steering, and of course the water pump. Uh, it would get these pulses from like the steering and the fucking belt it was so long it would come off. So the car would overheat in like two seconds right. if you were at the track and the, the pump stopped spinning. So I went through one or two cylinder heads because of that. It would warp the head like immediately. And uh, it, that drove me nuts. So then Bill and I found this dude in the UK and you can see it over here if you want to look at it. It's from a Vauxhall uh, Corsa. It's this is the steering controller box. This looks super janky, but no one ever sees so it. So is it? It's not. Way. It's not hydraulic anymore. It's electric. It's power. all electric. The okay. motor is actually right here. Okay. And oh yeah. It's like that's the assist, and it has variable assist. You can turn it up or down. Oh shit. Which this is, is pretty cool. Uh, so the setup is good, and Porsche has a better one. You, if you wanted to spend some serious money, you could buy like a really expensive. I've setup. heard of people using like MR2. Spider yep. one. Yeah, sure. They could use that too. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about this, what I'm going to change before the race, I'm going to put a bearing on here and run a support strut because you can oh, like, okay, you yeah. can like, it, do, it doesn't really seem that bad, but right. you can move it around. I just feel like the setup needs to be refined a little bit. But right. I just didn't tighten it enough and it was fine for all the testing I'd done, but once you start racing, everything changes and it slipped on the spline. When you hit the grass, it looked like you accelerated. It was like hitting warp speed. Yeah, it was <laughs> it felt bad. like I accelerated. It was bad. And I kept trying to turn, I'm like my brain hadn't caught up with right. what was going on, and there's no steering. You know? Right. And there's nothing you can do. I was like watching, like, oh, yeah. and then it, yeah. the, gra the, the woods came Did quick. You pause that video at the right spot. You can see my head, it, like my neck stretches like four inches. Oh, really? <laughs> So now Hans, Hans device, Hans. yeah. That was before the Hans. That's why you need two. You need, as I say, you need two of everything. Because now I have such an appreciation for how cool this car is stock. Right. And now it's becoming like a classic. Right. And, and you ruined I had it. it. It wasn't. It was like the market <laughs> was at the bottom. Right. No, I mean, I like, can, can can we talk about what you paid for it when you got it? Yeah. So I paid pretty good money. I think I paid eleven for it, which is like probably reasonable. Right. In the U.S. Yeah, because I mean, it probably cost three, four, but five to get here. You could buy them in Japan for like three grand. Right. I mean, it was like the R32. You get them for five grand back then. You want to see the start sequence? If yeah, I do. Can I go on the passenger side? It's raining again. What is that beeping? Oh, it's a solar powered mole stake. You put it in the ground and then moles don't like the uh, vibrations. Like, so we got on here. So we got a bunch of shit here. So I get shit for this. This falls into the things I would want to change. The switches should be like in order. Right. They should also phase the same way, but mine are all over the place. <laughs> this is They're like terrible. opposite of each so other. Like, there's like, okay, we got ECU, right? Goes right that's to on. go on. Yeah. We got the fuel pump. Oh, that's not goes quiet. that way. Oh, ignition power. That one goes that way. You might have to kick it out. I'm gonna get behind it.
It honestly seems louder in here than outside. So there's a two three watt cams. Yep. It's what? got uh, I think it's got Tomei two eighties in it. Oh, okay. So idle's really good. Yeah. It's just Is there no IAC on it and stuff? Is that... There is no IAC. Yeah, yeah it's do just it. the throttles kicked open a little bit. Right. That's it. This is another part of my like low tech approach. Ideally, this would be drive by wire. Yeah, you don't even need to restart. I, I just wanted to hear it. Well, we gotta warm it up so I can put the anti lag on. Oh, yeah, we do. You're right. So, this was just tuned how yeah. long? How long ago? A week ago. Less, like less than a week ago. And was the retune because there was no restrictor and stuff? Yeah. Or? yeah. So, there was few things behind that reason to do that this uh, ECU is life racing so oh. life, uh, plays into our conversation earlier about like buy what your tuner wants right, right? my tuner had never used this the oh. guy who worked for us now yeah he never worked with life it has a ton of options it's very sophisticated and Franz was a dealer so for Matt to like learn all the functions like study didn't make any sense because I wasn't going to pay him right. for 50 hours of studying all right. the functions. So that's why Franz did it this time. Uh, you can set up all the safety features. Uh, we also had to tune it for no restrictor. Uh, we got the anti lag. And you haven't driven around. it since then? No, no, I drove it around KTR just like when we were done off. And the how does it feel? Ridiculous. Yeah. Like I almost crashed right away. It's so, <laughs> it's so bad. That's sick it's though. Like, it feels like a thousand cc motorcycle. It's just that's awesome. So, okay, do you dri haven't driven Evos in this? Are you into the two three? The the stroker? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. You, you know, don't miss like the revs, or did did you no, lose I, I revs? Still rev it really high. Okay. So, because that's like I'm dealing with the RB26. People say it changes it to go to the two eight, and then like, but to spool that next size turbo is right. So attractive, yeah, yeah, you know. Sure. I don't think you can go wrong. No. Like, uh, two step is like for launch. Right. Uh, this has launch also, but the anti lag is backwards. Like two step, it's a different rev limiter when you're flooring it. Anti lag is active when you're off the gas. Oh. So it keeps the turbo spooled when you're off the gas. That's sick. And it does it by retarding ignition timing and putting fuel into the manifold. So it's exploding later, it's exploding in the turbo and it's causing the turbo to spool. And how's that for your turbo? Not too good. <laughs> That's why we let it warm up. First. Yeah. That's awesome. I'd just sit out here and do that. I wouldn't even drive it. I think that's a good place to end this video. What do you think? Yeah.